Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean aka Uncle Frogface and welcome to today's video. If you're new here then welcome, if you're not new then welcome back. So today I'm actually reviewing a couple of things. Uh, first of all I have these Stabilo Original RT Plus coloured pencils that I want to try out for a, a couple of things uh, but also as many of you know if you've seen the channel at all before whenever I'm creating I always have to have a cup of tea unless I've had a very bad night and then I'm drinking a cup of coffee but that is incredibly rare I'm, I'm a massive tea drinker and um, yeah, I've got something else that I wanted to, to share with you all as well that I have picked up on a recent trip to Cardiff from a company that I've been following on Instagram for a while. And then I suddenly saw the shot and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to pop in. Um, but I feel like I'm, I'm sharing too much already. Let me turn the camera around. You can just see a little thing down here. Let me turn the camera around. I'll show you what I've got because I'm very excited by this and uh, we'll crack on with today's artwork using these Stabilo Original RT coloured pencils. Welcome back to my desk. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep it neat. It's kind of working. <laughs> Uh, it's getting there. I've got my little coaster over on the side here, which I will have something pop on there in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to start off by saying that this is not a sponsored video. I am a influencer with Stabilo, so they do provide me products for free for the purpose of review. But they are aware that all of my reviews are entirely my own views and they don't influence that at all and they're very happy with that. So with that said, today we're going to be looking at this 24 set of the original RT Plus colouring pencils. They are, well you can see we've got a good selection of colours here. They're, um, it says on the back they're extremely thin, brake resistant lead. Partially aquarellable, um, and I've shown that on other coloured pencils, so we won't worry too much about the, that today. Uh, contours remain visible if you're using them as aquarellable, so that's why it says partially. Excellent light fastness and colour vibrance, very important, and perfect for drawing on dark paper, which is why you can see back here I've got some white paper and some black paper because. Uh, another Stabilo influencer, Donna, Supergirl Sketches, I'll uh, leave a link for her Instagram down below, has said that these work particularly well on dark paper. So we're going to do a bit of black paper artwork today, but I wanted to swatch out on both. Now I did tease that I've got something else that I want to look at today as well. And this is from the company Bird and Blend Tea. Again, not sponsored at all. But, you know, guys, if, if you want to send me a sponsorship, if you want to work with me, I will be very happy to do so. I'm a massive tea fan. I don't do anything creative without a cup of tea. And on their Instagram, several months ago, I saw a chocolate digestive tea bag that I was like, if I ever get the chance, I'm going to pick those up. Well, not only did I get the chance to do that, I actually popped into their Cardiff store recently and picked up this mixed favourites tea bag selection. 12 individually wrapped tea bags from all of their best sellers. So I'm just going to have a little open up. Let, let me just pop this to the side for a second and we'll have a look what we've got in here. So there is there's Mojiti. Uh, there is... Strawberry lemonade. So we've got some black teas, some green teas, some fruit teas. Great British cuppa. We've got Moondrop Dreams. Earl Grey Cream. Um, Dozy Girl. Sounds like me in the most mornings. Bonfire Toffee. Uh, deck Chair Dreaming. Rhubarb and Custard. Chocolate Digestives, that's the one that originally I saw. Uh, gingerbread Chai and Morning Kick. So I'm going to be working my way through these as I do art videos. I think each time I will randomly select out a tea bag and I'll give you a little mini tea review whilst I'm creating 
whatever the piece of artwork is that I'm creating. But today, I am definitely, definitely starting out with the chocolate digestive tea. Ah, oh, so it's smooth cocoa hit with chocolatey biscuit base. Brewing time, four minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. So I think what I'll do first is I'll swatch out these colours because we're here, I'll do that now. And then once I've done that, I can brew myself up a cup of chocolate digestive tea and uh, get cracking on a proper piece of artwork. So let us start with these pencils. And as I said, I want to swatch out both of these. I'm right. I'm gonna try and keep these in order this time. I'm really bad at going out of order with pencils. Um, we've got the white, obviously on the white paper, that's not gonna do very much, but white is very good for blending colored pencils. Uh, I can see it on there though. Let's see how this comes up on the black. Okay. Yeah, that is definitely coming up and I could see that as a nice base under other colors. It builds up quite nice as well, getting a good Good burnish on there. Does it smudge at all? No, not really. Does it erase? If I can find myself an eraser. That is one I use for charcoal, probably not the, the best one. Yes, it does erase. Good to know, very, very good to know. Right, so I'm just gonna carry on going through and swatching out all of these colors and I will see you in just a moment. And whilst I'm doing that, I should say Stabilo have been a long time supporter of the channel and they are very welcome indeed. And speaking of support, if you'd like to support the channel, the easiest way to do that is to simply like this video, subscribe if you have a second as well and you'll never miss videos in the future. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that you've enjoyed it and that other people might enjoy it as well. If you'd like to support even further, then you can do what these lovely people have done and join our Patreon where there are exclusive benefits, discounts on my Etsy stores, all of that good stuff. Okay, so first impressions from doing the swatches, they're very nice colouring pencils. They're fairly smooth to use. I've literally just gone ahead and scribbled these down so I can get an idea of the, uh, of the pigments. They're really nice to use in terms of laying down the colours. Uh, a couple of these I've gone over and just burnished a little bit to see if I can build up the pigment and it does work very well. You'll see though a huge difference in using them on white paper and using them on dark paper. There are some pigments, I mean, there's always gonna be a difference in the hue anyway when you're using white or black because of, well, just the nature of those materials and how they interact with each other. But you, if I bring, let's, if I slide this over just a little bit closer, these are all side by side and you really can see the difference in the saturation of the colors and, and how this one is much brighter than this orange here. But that's not really how I would use colored pencils on black paper anyway. This isn't actually something I've done before, um, but my gut kind of says, well, we're going on black, so just like I would with a pencil drawing, and I'm building up my shadows and then coloring over the top, I feel like I need to do the same and build up my light with the white or even the, the medium gray and then color over the top of that. So I'm gonna quickly do another set of swatches beside this set just to see how the colors react on the black if I have a white underlay. Okay, well I hope that you can see that by having a white underlay and then going over with the colour you get a much more vibrant colour. I could have been much more neat with this than I actually was. But it's also interesting to see that you don't always need an underlay of white. So for instance, this peachy colour down here is a perfectly fine colour without the white underlay. Same as this blue here, this green here, but with the white it gives a 
different dimension to that color. It changes it slightly. So I'm really gonna have to think about what I'm doing with my drawing when it comes to actually creating a piece. Um, I'm tempted on the black paper just to do a bit of practice work with uh, a bubble. It's generally a popular thing to do on black paper to draw bubbles because the, the soap and the light refracting through the soap gives a nice array of kind of um, rainbow colours through it, a bit like an, an oil slick. And I think that might be a good way for me to just test these out a little bit better before coming into something a little bit more advanced. So in fact, why don't I do that now? I'll, I'll grab a piece of paper here. I've actually got a circle guide over here. Uh, here we go. Um, I think, let's grab a pencil. I'm gonna use this very lightly. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do one bubble that big and I'm gonna do a couple of circles on the inside as well, just as guides for myself. And then I'll try and close this down and do one more. If I can line this up. There we go, I think that's probably all I need to be able to create a bubble piece. I'm not sure how well you can, can see that there, but there we go, I've got three circles. So I'm just gonna spend a few minutes and I'm gonna try and get this, this bubble picture sorted. I do a little mini time lapse, I think, and, um, and then I'll think about what I'm gonna do after that for a final piece. Okay, I probably spent more time on this than I should have, but I, 
I really got lost in it. I was really enjoying myself. And I think that's really what we want out of art, isn't it? Just to lose ourselves and have a bit of meditation and, and chill out and relax. Speaking of which, um, I think it's now time that I move on to something a little bit more refined. I'm thinking maybe an animal, maybe a bird. Birds tend to have a lot of these kind of very bright pigmented colours in. Um, so, important to say actually, through all of that, the, the white now needs sharpening, but I used a lot of that white in there. Didn't have a single breakage all the way through. They're lovely and smooth. They burnish really well, so as you go over them, they blend and smooth out really, really nicely. So, I've actually really enjoyed using them, and I think that's testament to the fact that I wanted to spend time just playing with them and creating this piece of, of bubble art. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go away. I'm going to make myself a cup of chocolate digestive tea. I'm going to have that over here on the side. I'm going to stick on some chill out music, and I really am going to kick back, relax, and just spend some time drawing. I decided finally to go for a bird. I did think maybe I'd go for like a, a macaw or something brightly coloured, a toucan or something like that. But um, I don't know, I, I just thought to myself the colours lent themselves really well to a cassowary, particularly on black paper because they have all of that black shaggy featherness around their, their midsection as well. So I thought that's what I'm going to do. So a very quick pencil sketch, very quick indeed but i think that's an important part of art is to keep things nice and loose and then tighten everything up later um so yeah i'm tackling this slightly differently to how i would normally which would be to lay in a pencil sketch then either go in and do an ink drawing or do a pencil drawing and then color over the top of that or paint in values you know I'm, I'm very much focused on the light and shade but when you're starting with something light, you're painting in all of the lack of light. Here, I'm starting with the lack of light and I'm painting in the light or I'm colouring in the light. So I'm using the the grey first of all because I think that's a really nice mid-tone value just to get in and rough out where I want my darkest darks and my mediums and then I can go in with the white and pick out some of those details. And then it's just a case of building from there. So laying in the, the blues and the reds and building up slowly and just taking my time. I think this whole thing in total took about 45 minutes. So about twice what the bubble took. But I honestly enjoyed this so much. It was really nice just to kick back, relax, chill out and just create a piece of art with no expectations and just enjoy using the supplies. Now I did say as well that I would let you know about the tea. So it was the, the um, bird and blend chocolate digestive tea. When I opened the little paper packet with the tea bag inside, oh my God, it smelled almost like um, chocolate cheesecake. It had that really buttery, biscuity, what Americans would call graham cracker smell with a hint of chocolate. And I brewed up a lovely cup of tea and I took a few sips as I was doing the art and it was so nice, really, really nice. I was worried that it might be, that it might need some sweetness in it. I don't have sugar in tea uh, normally, but I thought mm, with it being like a biscuit taste, it might need some, some sweetness, but it didn't at all. Nothing was overpowering, but it, it tasted like a, a cup of tea that I had been dunking chocolate digestives into and then eating and then you get that that lovely kind of oaty chocolatiness at the end of the cup it was so so nice so I'm very very happy that I went into the, the store in Cardiff and picked up this this box and I will definitely be continuing and in future videos I'll um, randomly select tea and give you my little review of it as well. So also I should probably point out that the the girls who were in the Cardiff store for Bird and Blend was so nice they were really really friendly so if you're down that way I know they've got multiple stores I think my closest might be Manchester now um, but yeah if you get a chance to pop in just have a chat with them because they were genuinely very nice. 
Anyway, that's it for the uh, the tea review. Um, we're making progress with this picture, so I'm just gonna let you enjoy the rest of this. Sit back, relax, just like with the bubble picture, and uh, I'll catch you right at the very end with my final thoughts. Okay, so we are completely finished and you can really tell the importance of doing a swatch before you work on a piece because this would have just been an absolute disaster otherwise. But actually, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I don't usually work on black paper, but it really, it's, it's quite a unique thing working on black. I've done black paintings before where I've put colour on, on black canvas but not penciled like this before. And um, I think it might be a little bit of a convert. I really, really love these pencils. They build up really, really well. You can see I was able to go over and layer and layer and layer. And I'm sure if I carried on, I would be able to layer and burnish even more, but then that wouldn't quite be my style. But it's, it's really lovely. I particularly like the eye and how well those colours blended together. But you can see whether it's something simple like this bubble over here or something more complex like a southern cassowary, which honestly I, I see these at Chester Zoo all the time and they are terrifying dinosaur birds. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just goes to show you just have to kind of put some time in and, and a bit of forethought and, and you can come up with something not too bad. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts below, so do leave a comment, tell me what you think, tell me which of these you prefer as well, the bubble or the cassowary. As always, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video, and until next time, goodbye.